What we're going to be doing now is kicking off our very first block of lightning talks. This is an area which has become incredibly populated just in the last year. A lot of very exciting papers looking specifically at the problematic area of bias, machine learning, and inclusion. So to kick that off, our very first speaker is going to be Joy Bolamwini from the MIT Media Lab. Joy, over to you. Good morning, good morning. I'm Joy Pot of Code and the founder of the Algorithmic Justice League. Today I'm going to present the undersampled majority. And so my path into AI starts with computer vision with the look at facial detection and recognition software. I've had the experience of coding in a white mask or barring somebody else's lighter face to be detected, and so that led my exploration into why. And so looking at where we've come with facial recognition, I go back to 2014 where Facebook released DeepFace, which increased the state of the art by 27 percentage points. We were really excited, and we tracked this using the LFW benchmark. But my question was, how representative is this benchmark? And are we getting a false sense of progress based on SKUs within these benchmarks? So researchers in 2014 looked at the breakdown of LFW labeled faces in the wild and found that it was 77% male and 83.5% white. And so I'm thinking, huh, maybe this is why my face wasn't being detected so well. And we know that with data-centric technology, data is destiny. So the question is, how fair is our fate? So then I looked at the latest government benchmarks released in 2015, and these benchmarks were described as being the most geographically diverse. So I thought, why not check? When I took a look at the benchmarks, I looked not just at gender, but also phenotypic representation. And so I labeled the faces using the Fitzpatrick type with six points, lighter skin to darker skin. And here's the breakdown. As far as gender parity, we're close to where we were back in 2007, right? Still at 75% male. And then when you look at the representation phenotypically, we're at 80% lighter skin. I decided to take it one step further and do an intersectional breakdown, which I hadn't really seen much of in any of the papers I'd encountered. And the what, reason I wanted to do the intersectional breakdown is we don't have disaggregated metrics when we look at the performance. We get 97.5%, right, doing well on LFW, but what does that really mean for subgroup populations? When it comes to the government benchmark, this is what I saw when I did the intersectional breakdown. You see that the majority of this government data set that's used to benchmark for the industry is 60% lighter males and only 4.4% darker females. And when you consider people of color make up 27% of the US population, so you would expect at least 13 if we're doing it just based on representation. This is not okay. So our fate is fair when it comes to pigmentation, but this definitely is not where we need to stay. We can't have data sets that are mainly male and pale. And when we talk about diversity, increasing gender diversity is great, but we also need to think about phenotypic diversity as well moving forward. And one way to do this is to think about full spectrum inclusion. So this is the Jabolski map, which shows the skin type representation around the world. And we can see it is not 80% pale, and of course the world is roughly 50-50. So this is part of the work of the Algorithmic Justice League, looking at how we can create more inclusive benchmarks so we have a realistic view of where we are, because if we have data that's largely male and pale, we're going to fail at being inclusive and intersectional moving forward. Thank you.